Ok, here's a solution of the final problem from the movie X plus Y that I challenged you with in the last mythology video. But first, here's the problem again. Remember you've got this 4 times 4 grid and 4 colors. Now color the gray squares with the 4 colors such that in all 2 by 2s in the grid we've got all 4 colors. In the sample coloring over there that's the case. There, all 4, all 4, all 4, all 4, all 4. Yep, that's right. OK. <laughs> now what you're supposed to show is that whenever you have such a special coloring of our grid then the four corners of the grid are colored with all four colors. In fact you're supposed to show that this is always the case for 4 times 4, 8 times 8, 12 times 12 and in general 4n times 4n grids. Here's one way to show that for a 4 times 4 grid colored in this special way the corners will always have different colors. I'll illustrate with the smallest case the 4 by 4 but the same proof also works for 8 times 8, 12 times 12 and in general 4n times 4n grids. Ok, how do we make up one of those special colorings of the grid? Well, let's start by coloring two neighboring squares in a corner with different colors. What about the next two? Well, since all squares in this 2 by 2 are supposed to be of different colors, the two gray ones have to be colored green and yellow in any order. What about the next two? Of course, purple and red, again in any order. And one more, yellow and green, again. So we've got pairs of colors alternating. Purple, red, green, yellow, purple, red, and green, yellow. So we've yellow and green on the right and purple and red on the left. This means that we can be sure that the four highlighted squares are colored differently, no matter what special coloring we're dealing with. Let's remember that. Next, let's have a look at these three squares at the top. They happen to be of different colors. Let's say the only thing we know about one of these special colorings of the grid is the colors of these three squares. What can we deduce about the rest of the coloring just using this information? Well, how about this square? What color can it be? Well, this square is part of this 2 by 2, therefore this square cannot be purple or yellow. However, since it's also part of this 2 by 2, it can also not be red. So since it's not purple, yellow or red, it's got to be green. No other choice. All good so far? Great. But then the remaining gray in this 2 by 2 has to be purple. Again, no choice. And the remaining gray in this 2 by 2 has to be red. Great. So the three different neighboring colors in the top row force the colors of the three squares underneath. And notice those squares in the second row also have different colors. OK, what else can we say? Well, since we are again dealing with three neighboring squares of different color in the second row, we can repeat the argument and figure out what the color of this square is. Well, let's see. It's not red or green and also not purple. And so it's got to be yellow. <laughs> Aha, the same color as the square right above in the first row. But now, no matter how the first two rows continue, we can conclude that the third row has to be a copy of the first row. Wait, what? Well, there. The remaining gray in this 2 by 2 has also got to be red, right? just like the one in the first row. The next gray has to be yellow, just like in the first row, and so on. OK, so to summarize, if we know that in the first row of a special coloring there are three neighboring squares of different colors, then we can be sure that the third row is just a copy of the first row. However, because we also know that the second row contains three neighboring squares of the same color, we conclude in the same way that the second and the fourth row have to be the same. In general, if you've got a special coloring of a 4n times 4n grid and there are three neighboring squares of different color in the first row, all odd number rows have to be the same as the first row and all even number rows have to be copies of the second row. But now remember that the four ends of the first and second rows are definitely of different color. But since the last row is the same as the second row, we conclude that all four corners of our special coloring are a different color. Fantastic. We're definitely getting somewhere here. OK, is it possible that no three squares in the first row are of, no three neighboring squares in the first row are of different color? Well, the three squares can definitely not all be the same color. So if there are three, not all different, they gotta be colored with two colors and situated like this. What can we say about the next square? Well, if it's not yellow or purple, say if it's green, 
when we got three neighbors of different color and we know what happens then. So the only way to continue on a new path is by having the square yellow. But then the next row has to be all red and green. So in particular these two squares must be green and red in any order. Then the next gray on the right has to be green. The next one has to be red. So just like in the first row we've got two colors alternating and that's pretty much it. Now we conclude that all odd rows are alternating purple yellow and all even rows are alternating green and red. But then it's also clear that all corners of our grid have to be of different colors. And that's all that ever happens in those special colorings. Either the first row contains three neighboring squares of different color or the first row has squares of two colors alternating. In both cases we've seen that the four corners of the grid are of four different colors. Ta-da! Proof complete. <laughs> this nice problem was invented specifically for the movie by the British mathematician Jeff Smith. Jeff also served for many years as the leader of the United Kingdom team at the International Mathematical Olympiad as the current president of the IMO board. And he even made a short appearance in the movie. There, that's him. I'll put the name of the winner of the t-shirt in the description of this video. And again, thanks to Norm, my colleague here at Monash University, who dug out all this information about those problems in the movie.